Good morning. Good morning. I have a couple of announcements. Welcome to, to Grace Lutheran Church, including those who are joining us virtually this morning. We have today is LWL Light Sunday, so if you forgot to put your lights in the box, don't worry, we'll take them even if they're late. Uh, so you may just put them in the, in the box and mark them as lights. Other announcements continue to have the flood bucket project underway, and uh, there's items you can grab with a little cart that uh, you want to bring items in for that. When you bring your purchase items to Grace, put them on the table in the cafe. So if you have items you can purchase and you're bringing them in, the table downstairs in the cafe. Uh, the deadline is October 25th, so we're getting closer and closer to that. Continue to encourage, especially as I think more, more and more people are thinking virtual to check out our YouTube channel and uh, different offerings we have on there. One thing we've done more recently is we've done uh, Bible ABCs, which has been pretty well received, which is more for, uh, we've aimed it at preschoolers, but how other people uh, said they enjoy it too. Um, so check out the YouTube channel, check out Spotify, Apple Music, and I may be missing something, but it's probably all and if you need to sign up for, most of you probably are aware, you can also sign up for our weekly newsletter. I send out updates in the online bulletin and all that stuff. So just a reminder is, uh, as we get in the fall, and for all of those, if you want to stay connected with us, a variety of ways to do that. I think that covers our, uh, we, oh, we have community dinner the second Tuesday of each month, 5.30, 6.30, and appreciate that. Funds, uh, if you want to donate to that as well. Our sermon theme, we're closing up our series on putting it all together, and the point of that was, and of today too, is putting our faith into practice through focusing on different parts of our body. And today, we're focusing on our eyes. So we're focusing on, well, focusing. So that'll be our last, as we think about where we're looking, how we're looking, who we're looking at as we consider our, our faith and how we can use our peepers for God's kingdom. We'll continue with the ringing of the bell and our opening.
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's then confess our sins to God our Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you of our authority by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with Lord. our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We do not deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have the mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may make life in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgive you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, and therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and the bride adorns herself with the Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be called my God. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Full of marrow, of aged wine, love of wine. 
And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all people, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is from Philippians chapter 3, and I think it's fitting as we think about how to use our all of our bodies for Christ, uh, that Paul encourages us uh, to, to strive forward, not to think that we've accomplished everything or to think it's by our works, but nonetheless to put all, put all our strength and our heart into it serving Christ our Lord. Indeed, I count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having the righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings Becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Peter. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 11th chapter. see the light. Your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But when it is bad, your body is full of darkness. Therefore, be careful, lest the light in you be darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, it will be wholly bright, as when a lamp with its rays gives you light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I am the way of God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
mercy and peace to you from God our Father, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, we're uh, focusing on eyes, or we're focusing on how to use or maybe to train the different parts of our body to serve Christ as our Lord and our focus this week, as we've said already, is on our eyes. Jesus said in our gospel lesson, I is the lamp of the body. And a lamp or light helps you. It's kind of easy for us to take that for granted these days because lights are so easy to come by. Of course, it was a lot more difficult in Jesus' day, and a lamp or a light and the oil you needed were uh, really important and allowed you to do all kinds of things, just as light still to this day helps us to accomplish work or or do our chores, or read a book, or any number of things. Of course, today Jesus is encouraging us not just to consider what we're seeing, but also how we're seeing. If the eye is the lamp of the body, it's not simply one more part of life. And so Jesus encourages us, don't let what you see be purely accidental. Instead, he encourages us to be intentional about where we're looking. A lamp shows you what you need to see. As Jesus says, if your eye is healthy, then your whole body is full of light. When your eye is bad, your body is full of darkness. Therefore, be careful, lest the light in you be darkness. Uh, it might be helpful to think of our eyes as almost uh, a filter. Now, there's some things, of course, we can't control. There's some things we can see and can't see, or we can't control seeing that happen in front of us. You can walk through your eye, light with your eyes closed, right? But in some ways, our eyes are kind of like a, a filter. You know, you pull a filter, and it stops some things, and it lets other things in. And Jesus encourages us uh, to use our filters on our eyes, and not just to, again, be accidental, but to be intentional about what we're looking at and how we're looking at Jesus says, be careful. Don't just take your vision for granted or look at whatever you want, rather be purposeful. And the first step in being purposeful with any part of our body, including our eyes, is to first figure out where you're at so that you can know where you want to go from, from where you're at. And it would be helpful to take, you know, to think this past week, what have you seen? What, what kinds of things have you seen uh, in, in the past week? Maybe make a, a mental inventory. Or if you really wanted to get serious about it, you could journal one week uh, for some of the different things you see in that week. What's gone into the, as they say, the window of your soul? Do you need to make any additions or deletions? Because what you see affects how you see everything else. That's not just me talking, that's science, right? Our body reacts to different stimuli and, and when we see things that we like, our brains send chemicals that make us feel good to our bodies, or, you know, and, and so we're wired to try to go for those things that make us feel good before. Similarly, when we see something that we don't like, our brain chemistry uh, makes us feel sad or bad. And so now our body, not just, you know, not just a choice, but our bodies themselves are being trained to avoid those kinds of things. So, you know, as the song says, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Because good or bad, it will start to rewire your brain circuitry. May not need all the proper terms, but the concept is, is scientific. The, the good news is that our brains are and our synapses and all that junk, it's not junk, but they are constantly rewiring themselves, so it's never too late to change, right? Our brains continue to rewire, and again, the point is we kind of train our bodies 
uh, by what we look at or uh, what we experience in life, we start to train our, our whole self uh, to go in particular directions. So, the point being is train your eyes to look at certain things. Um, eye discipline in football is a term that's thrown around. And it means looking at your the key things your opponent is doing. You know, because in a in a play, uh, there might be all kinds of motion if you're on defense, there might be all kinds of things going on. But really, all you need to focus on is a couple things that you don't want to get distracted by all the motion around you, unless it's your particular you know, assignment. Um, but otherwise, you're supposed to have eyes and look at what you need to be watching so that you don't get thrown off track. And the same sort of thing can apply to us as Christians. We need eyes to Don't get too distracted by everything that happens in life, but know what's most important. And what are the key things to, to our life or to our life as a Christian? And stay focused on those. Because our opponent, Satan, is looking to distract us. Just like Joe Burrow sent somebody in motion to distract the linebacker so that he could go this way while the linebacker can go. The same thing our opponent, uh, Satan, is looking to distract us from what's really important. He's trying to get us to take our eyes off the prize. So, what are the key things uh, that we are supposed to be looking at? Well, I've thrown a couple in here. Um, uh, there's probably more, but here's a, a few different things, keys that we should be paying attention to. And one that I think is particularly pertinent uh, right now is how much time are you spending online? We, can, we can't always these days go everywhere anymore, but we can look at a website or check out a YouTube video or join a Zoom meeting or any number of things, right? And right now we can say thank God for the internet. Uh, we need it, but we also need to, as Jesus said, be intentional, uh, be careful how we're using it. And, and the truth is, if some people are going to need to spend, everyone's different, and different people are going to need to spend varying amounts of time online, and I'm not going to sit up here and say you need 37 or 163 minutes or whatever. I, obviously, I can't make that decision or tell you what's too much or too little, unless you're a kid. Uh, otherwise, um, yeah, everybody's going to have different uh, different amounts of time they're going to need to spend online for work or for connecting with family or other things. The only point I want to make is there is such a thing as too much time online. Whatever that line is for you, you're probably going to have to be more, have a better idea of where it is than I do for you. But the internet can be a time suck and uh, our phones can become uh, too much of a distraction at times. So it's important as we're looking today, just a really, I think, relevant issue is how much time we're spending online. Uh, now, again, the internet is, uh, I don't want to say that it's bad, because it's not. In fact, we need it, and it's really helpful for us in many ways. Um, but it's important to remember and keep in mind that TVs and computers and cell phones, they are tools. They're not an end in and of themselves. And when they become an end in and of themselves and they distract us from more important things, let's well, when it's time to, to uh, rein in our use a little bit. Uh, probably like many of you, I have to admit that there's probably times that I've spent too much time on my I spent too much time uh, looking at my phone. And so I'm uh, preaching to myself as much as anyone else. But it, again, it's important to remember that while we need them and they're tools, remember that they're just tools. But here's some more timeless issues uh, that don't uh, that don't rely on technology. Another question is, what should we be looking at? Last week, uh, in our letter to the Philippians, uh, 
Paul reminded us to focus on what was good. If anything is good or praiseworthy, look at these things, Paul said. Uh, what good things might we be looking at? Well, you know, some of these answers, obviously, uh, we can look at God's Word, and it's important to make that a priority. Uh, right now is a wonderful time to look at the beauties of God's good creation. You know, driving through the hills in Cincinnati and seeing all, all the different colors, it's, a, it's a, a beautiful time. And looking at, simply observing the beauties of God's creation is a positive thing. Uh, or focusing on the tasks we need to carry out. It could be jobs at, or tasks at work things we're trying to accomplish at home. Another important thing for us to be looking at is those around us, looking at our, our family, maybe our spouse, or uh, friends, or, or co-workers. Uh, see what people are doing around us and uh, what they need, or what they're communicating to us. It's so important in life and communication, they teach you, to be looking at the person that you're communicating with because you will miss so much if you're not paying attention to uh, what they're saying, not only with their words, but with their body language and their expressions. And that kind of leads into the, the next key uh, question is, who are you looking at? Who's in front of you? Who do you see on a, a daily or weekly basis, or maybe monthly? But if somebody regularly is in front of you, that they deserve your attention. Uh, spending time paying attention to your spouse or to your family or to your close friends or to fellow church workers uh, is uh, important. One super Christian thing to do is to focus on uh, or look at the people that no one else is paying attention to. People who are overlooked or ignored or despised. Well, that's really folks that Christ would have us not ignore, uh, but to look at and pay attention to. And to, you know, be friendly reminder, just because we have to be more physically distant these days doesn't mean that we need to become emotionally distant from our loved ones. But we're spiritually distant from our brothers and sisters in Christ. And now this is certainly, it's easy when you can't see somebody, when you can't be in the same, you know, physical space is somebody, here's what we need to be using our phones and the internet. It's easy to kind of lose track of that, but it's kind of a reminder uh, to not to not forget about all the people who it's not impossible for you to connect with, but it's easier to forget about nowadays. Uh, I think it's that's something that probably is uh, it's, we're prone to doing. And, and remember, we can't maybe connect with everybody in the same exact way, but there's still ways that we can connect with we all appreciate that, and others appreciate that when we connect with them uh, and make uh, a bit of an effort, even if we can't see them in person. Uh, simply touching base can communicate uh, that we care. Another question is who are we looking, not just looking at, but who are we looking to? Because we all look for examples in life role models or leaders or call whatever you want. We naturally see people who are successful and we want to uh, replicate their success. Our default mode is often to focus on our, our families um, as our role models and examples of how to live. But even with the best of families, we all still need to look for uh, others, look to others as well as clues or advice on how we ought to live, or speak, or act. We need positive Christian examples. Now, the scriptures provide some decent examples for us, of course, and one really great example in Jesus. But I think for many of us, it helps to have somebody who we can observe a little more closely uh, as well. Uh, I was certainly blessed that many of you may were to know to have a really helpful and, and good examples around me. My parents and my brother were, uh, my older brother were much more often than not good examples to me of how to live and to act, and I thank God for them. 
we all need more. Uh, we all need a variety of people and, and models and examples of how we ought to live. When I was a kid, of course, I, I liked sports stars and, uh, and uh, other people, including family, and even at that time, my pastors were people who I was maybe not always thinking about looking to, but I was looking to them for cues for uh, uh, standards of how to live uh, my life. And so that rolls into our challenge for this week. And every week we're trying to give you something, uh, something practical to do. And today is to try to focus on a uh, Christian leader or role model. Uh, maybe it's a, maybe it's a, a strong Christian in your field of work or in your family. Uh, I'm, for instance, going to try to be intentional and think about. Because sometimes I know I, I do things. Um, and I think about. How my dad, for instance, might handle different things, because uh, he probably handles some things better than I do. I do better to, to pay attention to his example. So that, that's one thing I'm going to do. I, got a, I recently got a book by a, a Christian, uh, Lecrae, who's a Christian musician, uh, but who's also really creative and intelligent and faithful in his, uh, in his faith in Christ. And so I'm reading that book. Your list of what that, who that is, uh, could be very, very different. But what's important is to have some God-fearing, faithful examples that we look to, and I encourage you uh, to, to do that this week. Uh, and how you do that again might be different. I kind of a, uh, I, I like books, and so reading a book is a natural way. Reading a book might not be the way to do it. It might be uh, just paying attention to, to somebody or watching uh, a video about them or an interview with them, any number of things. Of course, above all, we look to Christ our Lord. We look to Jesus as the author and perfecter of our faith, as the author of Hebrews says, because he's going to tell us, Jesus gives, tells us many things. He gives us wonderful advice and instructions on how to live. He gives us advice on all kinds of things, including our eyes and how to use our eyes. He gives us advice about how to treat our neighbors. How to have what kinds of how to uh, have compassion and how we ought to live and speak and even think. We don't just look to Christ for uh, as for instruction. We also can look to Him as an example because, as we said, we need examples. We need visual examples of how to live and think and breathe and act in this world. And certainly, none can surpass Christ. Our Lord, although really good examples will reflect on him. It's good not just to read about Jesus, but to really look at if I can use that expression, to pay attention not just to the words, but to what Jesus is actually doing in our gospel lessons uh, as he's having compassion or reaching out or touching someone uh, or, or any number number of actions that our Lord is doing that we uh, can learn from. We can see how he interacts with others, and we also can see how he keeps his eyes focused on God's plan of salvation, which for him meant a single-minded focus on the cross and the victory that he won for you and me at great cost to himself. But ultimately, we look to Christ for something even greater than only instructions, for example, we look to our Lord and Savior for mercy and grace. We're expecting something when we look to our Lord. We're not only here to observe what Jesus does, we're to see an example. We want something from Him. We have been promised something from Him. We expect something from Him. We want proof of His love and and of course, he gives it to us. And that is what a cross is meant to remind us of, of God's great love for us. And that's why Christians, that's why we use crosses. Not because the cross is a holy or good thing in and of itself, but it was actually quite a, a nasty, ugly thing in its day. Uh, but we remember 
God's great love for us and the salvation and the purchase for us on the cross and the forgiveness that he promises. So as we think about our eyes, it's important to, uh, you know, we in, in some great ways we keep an eye on ourselves and be careful about what we're doing and, and what we're looking at and how we're looking. We also keep an eye on leaders around us, Christian examples in front of us uh, who can give us, who we can see, look to for how to take that next step or how to, how to deal with a certain problem or adversity. And of course, we first and foremost keep our eyes fixed on our Lord and Savior. We look to Christ and to the cross because our sins are shadowed by God's grace. He is the light, and as we look to him, he fills us with light as well. In Jesus' name.
power to grant to us grace sufficient for all our needs and for the needs of all people. Let us pray to the Lord to open the eyes of the blind, including what we ourselves are blind. To open our eyes to see, Lord, what you want us to see and to look at those things that are good, honorable, trustworthy, and true. Most importantly, Heavenly Father, help keep us, help us keep our eyes focused on Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray to the Lord to teach us to trust not in our works, but in his work. And for a steadfast faith to endure in time of test, trial, and tribulation. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray to the Lord to bless our nation with peace and harmony. And for the Lord to bless our president, governor, all legislators and judges, and those who protect and defend us against all the enemies of our land. Lord, in your mercy. In your Let us pray to the Lord to heal the sick, give relief to the suffering, grant comfort to those who mourn, and give peace to the dying. We pray especially this week for Billy Beinkamper, and Dave and Linda Isley, Esther Goldfuss. I would pray also that you be especially with Edie Hampton, uh, hospitalized recently. Uh, watch over her and pray that you lay your healing hand upon her. Uh, be with uh, Becky. Lord, bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. <laughs> Oh. 